So we need the practice, right? Let's practice PSA. Let's find the zeros or find the solutions or the x-intercepts or the roots or whatever you want to call them with the following five examples. There's four that you can see there, and there's the fifth one that's hidden a little bit. So here we go. Let's go. PSA. Awesome. Awesome. PS, PSA. There it is. Product is six. Sum is five. Find two numbers to multiply to give me six. Well, simple. Two and three because two plus three adds up to five, so your answer is two and three. So, okay, here's the factorization, x plus two, x plus three. But remember, to solve this, we have to make sure that that equals to zero. So, okay, let it equal to zero, meaning you've got now in a different color here, x plus two equals to zero, x plus three equals to zero, and go nuts. Subtract by 2, subtract by 2. x equals to minus 2. There's your first root, or 0, or x-intercept, or solution, whatever you want to call it. Minus 3, minus 3. x equals to minus 3. So there's your two solutions. So you know graphically at minus 1, 2 here, and minus 3, that's where your parabola is going to be. Okay? On we go. Let's go to this one. Number 2. Okay. Same thing. P-S-A, your product is always this one, 9. Your sum is always the middle one, 10. Put two numbers together to multiply to give me 9. Well, 3 and 3 work, but 3 and 3 don't add up to 10. What adds up to 10? Simple, 9 plus 1, okay? So 9 times 1 is 9, 9 plus 1 is 10, so your answer is 9 and 1. X plus 9, X plus 1. Let that equal to zero because, of course, you're solving, so that has to equal to zero. So you got x plus 9 equals to zero, x plus 1 equals to zero. Subtract the 9 from both sides, x equals to minus 9, x equals to minus 1. Some people, when they're really good at solving, can actually do this step in their head. Okay, see if we can do that for the next one. Here we go, number three. On we go, and there's number five that popped up. Okay, same old, same old. Who cares if it's f of x? We still know to find the solution that has to equal to zero. So here we go. P, S, A, bada boom, bada bang. Here we go. There's 10. There's now minus seven, because in fact, that is negative. So two numbers to multiply to give me 10 is five and two, but the problem is five plus two gives me positive seven. We want a negative 7. So guess what? Just make these both negative. Negative 5 times negative 2 still gives me a positive because the negative times the negative is a positive. And negative 7, not simple. Look, minus 5 plus minus 2 works. So your answer is minus 5 and minus 2 this time. So here we go. X minus 5, X minus 2, let that equal to 0 and go crazy. Here we go. X minus 5 equals to 0. X minus 2 equals to 0. So X equals to 5. X equals to 2. Whew, we're cruising here. Look at that. There's your two solutions. Same thing goes with this one now. All right, here we go. F of X has to equal to 0. So now you got a PSA. There it is. Okay. This is minus 56. This has got to be minus 10. Now, here's the dilemma now. What two numbers multiply to give me minus 56? Well, one of them's got to be positive, and one of them's got to be negative, and you got to figure out which ones those So I'm just going to do this for you and just show you. The numbers are 4 and 14, okay? 4 times 14 is actually going to give you 56, right? But look what I did. I made the 4 the positive and the 14 the negative. I didn't just do that by fluke. And one of the reasons why is because I kind of shut this podcast off for a second, did it really quickly on my calculator, and looked at all possible values of 56 that would, that would multiply out. Okay? Here's an interesting thing, right? Look at this. You could have went minus 56, and you could have divided it by 2, and if you did, you would have gotten 2 and 28. Then you could have said, okay, that's 2. Do you remember doing this? That would have been times 7 times 4, right? Okay, that would have given you 2 times 7, right? And then this guy would have broken down to 2 times 2. So there's 56 broken down for you. 
Okay, now look what pops up. This is kind of interesting. If you look at possible combinations of this value, those will give you all of the products that you need. Possible combination I looked at was two times seven and two times two. And you have to use all of those numbers. Two times seven, there's our 14. Two times two, there's our four. So you can go back to grade 10, use the factor tree that you learned long, long, long time ago and figure out what are the possible values that you can do to multiply to give you minus 56. And the cool thing is, is they give you these wonderful values, which we know four plus negative 14 gives us negative 10. So our answer is four and negative 14. So continuing on then, Look at this. This gives you x plus 4, x minus 14. That equals to 0. And, oh, running out of room. There we go. x plus 4 equals to 0. x minus 14 equals to 0. So you've got x equaling to minus 4 and x equaling to positive 14. So if you were to graph this out, negative 4, 1, 2, 3, 4 would be here. 14 would be all the way out here somewhere, and you know you'd get a problem that looks something like that. Okay, so let's go one more step. Okay, show you one last PSA, and then I would suggest that maybe you go back to the beginning of this podcast and try every one of these questions solo, and then look at the podcast and stop it after every question and see if you did it right. Okay, here we go. PSA, our favorites. Okay, product in this case, minus 30. Sum in this case, minus one. So that means one has to be positive, one has to be negative. And when you get a really good hang of this, you'll find minus six times five, there's our minus 30. Minus six plus five, there's our minus one. Answer, minus six and five. So going over here, x minus six, x plus five. And you know that again, to find a solution, that has to equal to zero. X minus six equals to zero. X plus five equals to zero. And then you'll find out the X equals to six and X equals to minus five. Those are your solutions and your intercepts of the graphs. So here's an important note. In order to find the zeros, what must the function equal to? Of course, that gives it away. You have to let this entire function equal to zero, which we did every single time here, right, in order to find the solutions. Stop the podcast, go back, try every one of these questions, and watch the podcast again. Be really efficient at PSA if you're going to do well in this section of the course.